For the sake of testing, I'm going to add a game control member to the resetter script. Set it to find object of type game control, then increment the current score of the current level by 10k. Now make a script named information and open it. This is where saving and loading will take place. Make a public static void save that takes in a list of worlds as a parameter. Then make a public static function that returns a list of worlds and name this one load. Inside, create a new list of worlds, temp worlds, and run through a for loop for the length of gamecontrol.numworlds, adding a new world on each loop. This temporary list will be returned at the end of the function, and it is what the saved information will be loaded into. To save and load information, we're going to have to use a double for loop to access the levels within each world. Within the first loop, make a string world equal to world plus i dot to string. This unique string is going to be used as a key to access things inside player prefs. Make another string named level in the second for loop and set the value to level plus j dot to string. The only values that really need to be saved are the high score and the unlocked bool. So set temp worlds i dot levels j dot high score equal to player prefs dot git int. Use our world key plus our level key plus the string high score. Player prefs doesn't store a boolean variable, so I'm going to use a string to save unlocked and something called an inline if statement to quickly access it and set unlocked. The first part of an inline if statement is the statement itself, which is that player prefs .get string world plus level plus unlocked is equal to the string true. The question mark marks the end of the statement. What's behind it will return if the statement is true, and what's behind the colon is what will return if the statement is false. So the way that this reads is if the string that is returned by string is equal to true, unlocked is going to be set to the boolean value true. Otherwise, it will be set to the boolean value false. Hopefully that makes sense. Make sure to return temp worlds outside of the double for loop. Before the double for loop, I'm going to ask if playerprefs.has key world0, level0 in all caps, high score. World0 would be the key we set in the first loop, and level0 would be the key we set in the second loop, plus the high score, and there's no spaces because we didn't add any spaces. So if that key doesn't exist in playerprefs, we can make an else statement that will save the empty worlds that were just created. The save function uses the exact same double for loop, so copy and paste it. The only difference is that the save function sets the values instead of getting them. Call playerpress.setInt world plus level plus high score, and it's crucial that you're spelling high score the same way as the load function. Then in the second part, save it as the int in worlds i dot levels j dot high score. Then playerprefs.setString world plus level plus unlocked, and now we're going to use another inline if statement to see if worlds i dot levels j is unlocked, and if so, pass in the string true. Otherwise, pass in the string false. Outside of the double for loop, call playerprefs.save to officially save playerprefs. Finally, go back into load and use the save function in the else statement. Next, go into the game control script. Get rid of everything in the start function and set all worlds equal to information.load. Then attach information to the main camera. and press play to make sure there's no errors at this point. Back in game control, add void on application quit and inside call information.save passing in all worlds. Now the player prefs will save every time the game is exited.
Maybe we want to give the player the option to clear their saved information. Make another function public void clear data and inside call playerpress.delete all and then set all worlds equal to information.load which will now return an empty list of words since the player press keys are all deleted. To test this, I'm going to make a button and set the text to clear data. Then click on the button, find the on click area and add a new function. Drag in the main camera, which is where the game control script is attached. Then select the drop down menu and find the clear data function. Now I'll just position the button by clicking on its rec transform and alt clicking, shift clicking and control clicking on the top center to set its anchor, position and pivot. I'll press play to test this and you can see the data I had previously saved gets reset. The last thing I'm going to do is abuse the reset button we set up at the beginning of the video and max out a world to make sure everything is working properly. And it is. I hope this series was able to help you and thanks for watching.